Welcome to Unlocking Revelation Bible Prophecy Series. We are so glad you have taken time out of your busy schedule to watch this series. Today we're going to be looking at another one of those amazing Bible prophecies, which is dealing about something very important that we all need to have in order for us to overcome the battle of Armageddon. And that is Revelation's eternal sign of loyalty. What do you need to have? to show your loyalty to God and to stand by his side. It's a question that we all need to answer as we're looking at it. We've been talking about the fact that there's been a battle going on between the forces of darkness and the forces of light, between Christ and Satan. There has been a war that has been going on. And the angels that are presented in the book of Revelation, the three angels, are sent with a message to warn the world of the war that has started and the war that is about to culminate in the battle of Armageddon. It says in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to and 7, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach to those who dwell upon the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. So the Bible is calling us to worship God. And uh, this is the concept that we see in the book of Revelation. The issue is the issue of worship. Whether we are going to worship God or we are going to worship the beast. Revelation 14 verse 9, the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worships the beast in his image. So in the first angel, there is a call for us to come and worship God. In the third angel, there is a call to come and not worship the beast. So the beast also is calling for people to worship him. So the real battle in the end of time is the issue of worship. Are you going to worship the creator God or are you going to worship the beast? That is where the real contention is going to be with end time events as we are approaching them. In the book of Revelation chapter 7, John sees four angels holding the four winds of heaven that the wind should not blow on the earth until the servants of God are sealed with a sign of loyalty to God. And uh, this seal, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 3, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. There's a special mark, there's a special sign of loyalty that God places on his last faithful people as a sign that they belong to him and that they are his own people. And that special sign is in contrast with the mark of the beast, which we'll discuss in our future time. But here, the book of Ezekiel chapter 20, Ezekiel chapter 20 speaks about this special sign, this special seal. It says in verse 12, Moreover, I gave also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. So there's a special sign of loyalty to God, and God said he has given us the Sabbath to be a sign of loyalty to him. In Revelation chapter 4, we see that the only one that we need to worship is God. For he is the only one who deserves our worship. And John, looking up into heaven, he sees God sitting on the throne. And around him, four living creatures. And around the creatures, 24 elders. And as he sees, they all bow down to him and they say, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So in order for us to demonstrate this worship to the God who is worthy to be worshipped, and we need to live in obedience to his commandments. Because in actual fact, obedience is the highest form of worship. You can look at Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 19. Worship and serve is used interchangeably. The Bible says you shall worship and serve, meaning serve is obedience. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 19, the same words are used interchangeably. Also in Matthew 4, verse 10, Jesus, uh, when speaking to Satan, says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So worship and serve are used interchangeably, or worship and obedience, implying that obedience is the highest form of worship. The way you demonstrate that you are worshiping God is living in obedience to him, 
and the way you demonstrate that you're worshiping the beast is living in obedience to the beast. And James 2 verse 10 says, Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. God wants complete obedience or nothing. With God, 70% doesn't work. It's all or nothing. Is it possible that there are many Christian groups or many Christians in our generation or many people in our generation that are living in violation of the law of God? I want to ask you a question. Can the majority be wrong? I want to tell you the story of Galileo Galilee, the man who first discovered that what is actually happening is that the earth is the one moving around the sun, rotating around the sun, and not the sun. The sun is not moving. Uh, after he discovered that, he came and showed the bishops of Rome. And at that time, Rome was the one ruling the world. And uh, the belief that the church had and also society had at that time was that the sun is the one moving around the earth. They said, when you wake up in the morning, you can see the sun moving. But Galileo Galilee said, no, 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 what is actually moving is the earth. The sun is standing in the same place. Uh, but the bishops were not happy, and they wanted him to recant. Uh, you either believe that the sun is moving around the earth or else. And then Galileo Galilee said, well, I recant. And they said, okay, if you recant, that's fine. And he moved away. And some historian says, he was moving away, he said, but... That doesn't change the fact that the earth is still moving around the sun. So there are many things that traditionally we have believed, grown up to believe, that may not necessarily be true. And that is true also with other things of religion. When God gave man the Ten Commandments, remember that he gave them on Mount Sinai. And he gave those Ten Commandments written with his own finger, and he gave them to Moses. And Moses gave this law and wrote it for us in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 to 17, as we saw in our study on Revelation's greatest battle of the ages. And there is a law that most Christians have forgotten. I wonder why God wanted, no wonder why God used the word remember. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy ox, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. It's the longest commandment with the word remember which most Christians are not necessarily remembering. It's as if it's the commandment that God says, you need to watch this one, and you don't need to forget it. Uh, let's study the Sabbath. Jesus commanded us to keep the Sabbath in the commandment that we just read. And he also gave it at creation. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, we see the introduction of the Sabbath. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, we know very well the story of creation. God said, let there be light, and there was light uh, the first day, and then God, the second day, divided the waters. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, divided the waters. And then the third day, God now divides the dry land from the sea, and God saw that it was good. That was the third day. Fourth day, God commands, rather, third day, God commands that now the earth should bring forth all types of plants and grass and all types of fruit things. So the earth was beautiful with all different types of uh, animals. And then on the fourth day, God provided for the sun, the moon, and the stars. The Bible says he made the stars also on the fourth day. Then on the fifth day, God provided marine life and the birds. And he created them. It was beautiful. The whole earth mushroomed with such beauty. And then on the sixth day, God created animals in the morning. And then later on throughout that day, God created man. And also the woman were both created on the sixth day right there. And then the Bible says on the seventh day, God rested with his people. And uh, what the Bible says in Genesis 2 verse 1, 
is something very interesting. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested the seventh day from all his work which he had made. So the Bible tells us that God rested on this particular day, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had uh, rested from all his work which God had created and made. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, blessed it, and rested on it. So the seventh day, not any day in seven, but the specific seventh day, was blessed by God, was sanctified by God, was also hallowed by God. Why? Because on that day, he had rested from all his work. So God chose to do that. So you look at it, you have day number one, where the light is created. Day number two, the waters are separate. Day number three. Dry land appears and animals and plants. Day number four, uh, celestial bodies, which is the sun, moon, and stars appear. Day number five, we have marine life as well as birds. And then day number six, animals and man is created. And God points to the seventh day. The Bible says he did three things. He blessed it and sanctified it and rested on it. So day number seven is not just any other day. It's a special day that God created. Let me ask you a question. Is there a difference between any black book and the Bible? Yes, your answer will be yes. Why? Because the Bible is the holy book of God. God took this book, made it holy, and set it aside for it to be the guide of man and to be an infallible guide in matters of religion. The other question I'm going to ask you is, let's say you're considering getting married, and you're getting married to a lady who's coming from a family of six. In other words, there are seven of them in total and you chose the last born as the wife, the dear wife that you loved. And you basically paid your dowry for her, and you basically did everything that is necessary. You planned the wedding, and on that big wedding day comes, and then comes uh, the first born, who's coming dressed in white, all beautiful. Would you be happy with that kind of arrangement? Of course not, I wouldn't be happy either. Why? Because I chose the last born, not the first born, to be the one that I get married to. I have set her aside by my dowry payment, and I want to dedicate her to me. She's a special one for me. So it's not any day in seven. It's the specific seventh day. That is very important point that we need to understand. Number three is that Jesus worked miracles for people to keep the Sabbath. Remember the children of Israel when they're moving from Egypt to Canaan? Uh, he poured manna, and it was a miracle of 40 years. And every Friday, or rather every sixth day, he would pour out manna for them. Six days shall you gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be none. So six day, every sixth day, they would gather twice. And on the Sabbath day, which is the seventh, there would be none. And then, and some people still went out on Sabbath morning to try and gather manna, and God said, how long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Jesus faithfully kept the Sabbath. Uh, the Bible says in Luke 4 verse 16, So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So Jesus kept the Sabbath. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, it says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Which day is the Lord's day? Let's ask Jesus. Matthew chapter 12 verse 8, Jesus says, For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So the Lord's day is the Sabbath. Mark 2.28, therefore the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. Luke 6 verse 5, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. So the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, is the Lord's day, according to the Bible. Jesus taught his disciples to keep it. How? He said in Matthew 24 verse 20, And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. So their flight came in 70 AD. Uh, way before, way after Christ's death and resurrection, and they were still expected to keep the Sabbath. At that time, Titus sent an army to come and destroy uh, Rome, I mean, to come and destroy Jerusalem. And not only that, but the disciples still kept the Sabbath even after the death and resurrection of Jesus. In Acts 13 verse 42, the Bible says, The Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. And one thing that's interesting about this text, it says the Gentiles, not the Jews, this time around, you can see that even the Gentiles who were not Jewish, 
uh, still kept the Sabbath. That's Acts 13, verse 42. Acts 13, verse 44. And on the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. Acts 16, verse 13, Paul. And on the Sabbath day, he went, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. So it is a custom that every Sabbath, people would meet outside the city by the riverbank and they would worship God right there on the Sabbath. And we sat down and spoke to the women who we met there. So this was in Philippi where Paul uh, was keeping the Sabbath. Acts 17, verse 1, And they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And then Paul, as his custom was, went into them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the Scriptures. It was the custom of Jesus to go to the synagogue every Sabbath. It was the custom of the Apostle Paul in this text to also go uh, to the synagogue every Sabbath, which is something very, very important to us custom, even by the Apostle Paul, that most Christian groups use to say that we don't need to keep the Sabbath. Jesus says it is a special sign of love. Remember the sign of loyalty that we talked about. It says in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, Moreover also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me that they might know that I'm the Lord who sanctifies them. So the Sabbath is a sign that God is the one who sanctifies us. It's a sign of loyalty. In order for the law to be able to be effective in any country, you need to have the signature and the seal of that particular country. Uh, here you have basically the seal of South Africa. You have the name of the country, Republic of South Africa, the position of the person signing, the president, and then the name of the person signing, in this case it would be Jacob Zuma, and also his signature. So you see the three characteristics of any seal. You have to have the position and the name of the person signing. You have to have also the name of the territory that that person is ruling. In this case, the Republic of South Africa. And all that is found in um, this particular law. Uh, the fourth commandment contains the seal of God is the sign, is the one that shows which God gave this law. The name is the Lord God, the title is the creator, and the territory is heaven and earth. So that is something that we see very, very clearly only in the fourth commandment. Now, if you take the fourth commandment away, the ten commandments could be given by any God who did not create anything. The fourth commandment is the one that tells you which God, the one who created the heavens and the earth. That's why that commandment, is a sign of loyalty to God. Some people uh, also, the one thing that's very important about the Sabbath is that Jesus promises that it will be kept in heaven. So if it's going to be kept in heaven, you are better off practicing keeping the Sabbath right here on earth because uh, in heaven all are going to keep it. In Isaiah 66 verse 23, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So God promises that every Sabbath, people are going to come and worship before him. And uh, that's why it's important for us to understand this. The remaining few minutes, I want to discuss the issue of whether we can really know which day is the Sabbath. There's been so much debate about this. Can we really be sure which day the seventh day is? Because I can Sabbath Friday and you can Sabbath Saturday and somebody else can Sabbath Sunday. Can we really be sure which day the seventh day is? Let's look at the evidence. Is there clear, irrefutable evidence? Let's start with calendars. Uh, in most calendars, Saturday becomes the Sabbath, becomes the seventh day. You start on Sunday, you start counting, Saturday becomes the seventh day. But some of you may be saying, well... That's not in all calendars. In some calendars, Sunday becomes the seventh day. Okay. How about if you go to the dictionary? Seventh day. Uh, this is Oxford um, 1828 dictionary. It says Saturday, the seventh day of the week. So the dictionary tells us that seventh day is Saturday. Well, maybe the person who wrote it was somebody biased. So... Let's look at something that is more concrete, and that is the Bible. Remember the crucifixion of Jesus. He was crucified on a Good Friday, 
and he died and was buried, and then he resurrected on Easter Sunday. That's what we believe as Christians. Uh, that day, the Bible says, of his crucifixion in Luke 23, verse 54, was the preparation and the Sabbath drew near. In other words, the day that Jesus Christ died was the day before the Sabbath. And we all know that that day was a Friday. Um, and then the Bible says in verse 56, And they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So even the women who went to bury Jesus, and after applying spices on him, they had to go back, and the next day they kept the Sabbath. That is very clear from the Bible. Luke 24, verse 1, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women, um, so on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ resurrects from the grave. The Bible calls it the first day of the week. Let's analyze the order of events. Friday is called the preparation day. Sunday is called the first day of the week. And then the Sabbath is the day between Friday and Sunday. And there's only one day between Friday and Sunday, and that day is Saturday, the Sabbath. Other Bible versions make it much more clear. New English Bible says in Luke 23, verse 54 to 55, it was Friday and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had accomplished him, accompanied him from Galilee followed. They took note of the tomb and observed how his body was laid. Uh, and Luke 23, verse 56, 24, verse 1, New English Bible says, Then they went home, prepared spices and perfumes, and on the Sabbath they rested in obedience to the commandment. But on Sunday morning, very early, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. So it's very clear from the Bible that the Sabbath is the day between Friday and Sunday. And there's only one day that fits between Friday and Sunday, and that is Saturday. That becomes the Sabbath. It's very interesting that out of 108 languages in the world, the word for Sabbath is the one that is, the, one, the word for the seventh day of the week is Sabbath. Spanish is sabado, which means Sabbath. French is sabadi, which means Sabbath. Uh, Polish is sabata, which means Sabbath. Uh, Afghanistan and Arabic and many other countries and languages. Uh, in 108 languages of the world, the word for the seventh day of the week is Sabbath. I wonder where they got it from. I believe they were inspired by the teaching of the Bible as languages developed uh, from the Tower of Babel. Now, some people say, well, I hear you, but how can we be sure that the Saturday of today is the same Saturday, the same one that Moses kept is the same Saturday that Jesus kept? Maybe the weekly cycle has somehow changed, such that uh, maybe the Sunday of today was actually uh, Saturday some time back in history. Well, that's an intelligent question, and the best way to answer this question is to go to the scientists themselves. And there is the U.S. Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C. These are the people who are uh, very precise in calculating dates as well as in calculating weeks and calculating time. These are the people that tell us what time it is and, uh, and things of that. So this is scientific evidence. And uh, there was a letter that was written to them inquiring whether there has been any change in relation to the weekly cycle. And this is their answer. As far as evidence shows, there is no change in the continuity of the weekly cycle. In other words, the same Saturday of today is the same Saturday that Paul kept. It's the same Saturday that Jesus rested in the tomb. There's never been a change in the weekly cycle. So the Sabbath also is under attack. So what is the attack? Some people say the Sabbath is for the Jews. Well, is it? Let's ask Jesus. Mark 2.27, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. The Bible also tells us that the woman was made for the man and not man for the woman. So the Bible here doesn't say the Sabbath was made for the Jews. It just says for man. And man is generic. It's referring to all human beings. And by the way, the Sabbath was given to Adam and Adam was not a Jew. Uh, the Jews existed way back after Judah was born in the time of Genesis. Uh, so the Sabbath was not made for men. The other, if we are going to give the Jews the Sabbath, we'll also have to give the women the, uh, the we have to give the Jews the women. Because the Bible says the woman was made for the man. So if man there is Jew, then we have to give them the women. And I don't think we are willing to do that. 
The Sabbath was never an exclusively Jewish institution. It was given for all humanity to Adam before the Jews existed, and the Patras kept it before the Jews even existed. Some people say, well, the Sabbath was nailed to the cross. Well, let's look at it. The fourth commandment contains the Sabbath commandment. And uh, we also have ceremonial Sabbaths. These were Sabbaths that were connected with the feast days in the Old Testament. Um, these were different types of ceremonial Sabbaths that existed. That was the one that was nailed to the cross. We saw that in Revelation's Battle of the Ages, that the ceremonial laws was the one that was nailed to the cross. It's not the Sabbath. Then some people say, well, God is really just concerned about um, the, he's really just concerned about worship. So anytime that you worship, he's happy that at least you have worshipped. So every day is the same. It doesn't matter whether it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Let me um, ask you a question. Revelation 1 verse 10 says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So there's a specific day that is called the Lord's day. It's a specific seventh day. To illustrate this, I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say you found somebody taking this white piece of cloth um, pooing on it or jumping on it and pewing on it, what would you think of him in the middle of the street? None of you, what if he did that to the red one? What if he did that to the blue one? What if he did that to the black one? How about if he did it to the yellow one? How about if he did it to the green one? You'll think, oh, it's probably crazy. How about if he did it to this piece of cloth? Like this man burning the South African flag. What is happening here is that this piece of cloth has been dedicated to the country of South Africa. It's a symbol of its authority and power. It's not any cloth is the same. This is a specific cloth designed to illustrate the power of this country and it is a symbol. It's the same thing with the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a special day that God sanctified, set it aside and made it holy. Sunday, we keep Sunday in honor of the resurrection. Well, the Bible says we need to respect the resurrection of Jesus, but the Bible provides something else in honor of the resurrection of Jesus. Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into his death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. Jesus has set an ordinance to celebrate his resurrection, and that is baptism. So we can still keep his Sabbath and also celebrate the resurrection by baptism. The Sabbath was changed to Sunday. Some people say that. Well, partly true, but it was not by God. Who did it? Faith of our fathers. This is a Catholic speaking, Cardinal James Gibbons. He says, you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you, may, you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday. Catholics are telling us that you will not find any evidence for the Sabbath, for, for Sunday keeping in the Bible. John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's something that we need to do if we are to keep the commandments of God. Jesus is pointing us to the only commandment that has the word remember on it. God wanted us to remember the fourth commandment, my friends. Are you willing to choose to follow Jesus in obeying his commandments? We have seen that God gave us this special day in which we are to commune with him, in which he has dedicated to put a special blessing on it. And we have seen that the enemy has attacked the law of God and attacked the very commandment, which is the sign of loyalty to God and to his saints. And my appeal to you is, do you want to start keeping the Sabbath? Do you want to start following the lines of Jesus? Jesus is saying, look unto me and obey my commandments, and everything will be fine with you. I have dealt with a lot of objections in relation to against you keeping the Sabbath, and I appeal to you to take a decided stand to stand with Jesus in the battle of all ages, to take the sign of loyalty to show that you are going to worship the Creator and you will not worship the beast by choosing to follow Jesus today. If that is your choice and your desire, close your eyes with me now. And let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for the Sabbath. Help us to keep it and bless us as we choose to keep it. Help us to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you and thank you for watching.